القصة هي قصة تاريخيات سياسية Good afternoon, you're watching the English newscast on Future Television. Elena Tamim has today's top story. The People's Court says it filed a criminal complaint against Environment Minister Mohamed Mashnouf for committing an environmental disaster. Prime Minister Tamam Slam Hills Parliament Speaker Nabih Bedi's national dialogue call but warns that some political factions are trying to exploit the sufferings of the people. And powerful explosions rock the Yemeni capital Sana'a as the Saudi-led coalition vows to press its scares. A new activist group named the People's Court has announced that it filed a criminal complaint against Environment Minister Mohamed al mashnouk for committing an environmental disaster. During a press conference in Martyr Square in downtown Beirut, the movement said it filed a complaint against Mashnouk over his administrative violations which led to the spread of diseases and epidemics. It also demanded a modern electoral law that would constitute a platform for political reform in Lebanon and the implementation of administrative decentralization in the state. The movement further urged Lebanese people to take part in a mass demonstration to be held on Wednesday, September 9th, in accordance with the National Dialogue Session. Prime Minister Tamam Slam has hailed Speaker Nabih Bedi's national dialogue call, warning that some political factions were trying to exploit the sufferings of the people. During a meeting with a delegation of clergymen and prominent figures from the northern district of Akkad, Salam said the, in the, the initiative aimed at absorbing conflicts and seeks to find a breakthrough for the political crisis. Bedi called for a national dialogue to be held at Parliament on Wednesday, September 9th, to discuss the country's prolonged political crisis including the presidential vacuum. Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja decided to boycott the meeting, which was welcomed by most political factions. The premier said the popular movements in the country are a legitimate way to express the anger of the Lebanese over their deteriorating living conditions, but warned there was a side taking advantage of the popular anger to spread chaos in the country. He also called on media outlets to act wisely and refrain from provoking tension. Powerful explosions have shaken the Yemeni capital Sana'a after the Saudi-led coalition vowed to press its air war following a rebel missile strike that killed 60 Gulf soldiers. Witnesses said the coalition warplanes pounded Shia Houthi rebel targets and bases of splintered troops loyal to ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh. The targets included bases on the Nahdain and Fajatan hills and neighboring presidential complex south of Sana'a. The raids came two days after a Houthi missile attack in Marib, an eastern oil province, killed 45 UAE soldiers. Moving on to Europe, migrants are queuing patiently for buses to be taken to a nearby train station after a cold night at the Austria-Hungary border. The majority of them are expected to head on to Vienna and then Germany. Buses could be seen arriving at Nikolsdorf train station a few kilometers from the Hungarian-Austrian border. There was an increased police presence to ensure the situation remained under control and to help the migrants work out the next step of their journey. Australian leader Tony Abbott said that his government would welcome a higher portion of Syrian refugees amid Europe's humanitarian crisis, but would not increase its annual refugee intake. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has expressed U.S. concern over reports of Russia's enhanced military buildup in Syria in a telephone call with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov. The phone call came a day after media reports quoted U.S. officials as describing an increase in Russian military activity in Syria, expanding the country's support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The State Department said Kerry made clear that if such reports were accurate, these actions could further escalate the conflict, lead to greater loss of innocent life, increase refugee flows, and risk confrontation with the anti-ISIL coalition operating in Syria. And coming up next, we kick off our new series, A Positive Majority, with Najib Mitri from Blog Baladi Stadium. Thank you, Yumna. Good, Linda. Now,
Times have been a little tough lately, but we're kicking off this new series titled A Positive Majority to show that a majority, yes, and I do mean a majority of people, see the silver lining in Lebanon. And through their various activities or work, while well, they're highlighting the bright side of everything. Our first guest is Najib Mithri, the blogger behind Blog Baladi, a Lebanese blog that aims to stay away from Lebanese politics and give the online Lebanese community and the whole world a beautiful picture about Lebanon. Najib says occasionally Blog Baladi authors tend to share their experiences on new places such as restaurants, pubs, venues, and others, as well as insert sarcastic and fun posts that relate to the Lebanese society. Welcome, Najib. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So, this blog was started in 2010, and it's won a few awards. I know it won the 2013 Social Media Award for Best Blog. Congratulations, by the Thank way. You. What do you think it takes to have a successful blog? Uh, uh, there are three main things. First, you need to be consistent. We post every day, and oh, two to three times, sometimes more, depending on the content. And second, you need to have a relevant content that's appealing to the readers so that they keep coming back to read you. And third, and most importantly, you need to be credible and honest towards your readers. Like, you have to, if you're doing something wrong, you have to say this was wrong. You have to say things just the way they are, and then people will trust in you and read you more. Right, you said that you have to be credible. And I think yeah. with, you know, having, how many followers do you have right now? Uh, well, we have almost four to 5,000 visits a day on the blog. Okay, so, yeah. you know, and I know there are uh, 10,000 on Twitter, there's, a, there's about 18,000 on Instagram. And, you know, with having a blog comes great responsibility, right? right? Do you feel pressure to have, to deliver at you first, know. I didn't feel the pressure because I didn't have that many people reading me. But uh, <laughs> with, with every year, yeah, you feel more pressure, especially when there are, when there are sensitive topi topics to talk about. Right. So how do you approach those, right? You have a sensitive topic and you, you say you want to stay apolitical, which is yes. almost impossible today in Lebanon. Not really. Like you can always give your opinion, but give it in a rational way and like, uh, share your opinion, but uh, regardless from all the politics and the negativity around it. Okay, give like me an you, example. Like, you, like for example, when the, the road rage accident happened, uh, the guy right. who got killed. With, okay. Yeah, everyone, first things, uh, the first thing I do is I don't rush and post about something. You're talking about, let's just, uh, for our viewers who don't know, this is the road rage that ended up with... Uh, a man being stabbed to death yes, by in the middle of the street in the middle of the street yeah, with other Shafi. people watching by another man right yeah first thing i do i don't rush things i just read what people have to say i just i see i see the all the angles and then i tackle the topic and the the first thing i noticed for example is that everyone wanted to death penalty for this guy mm -hmm. which for me is not something that people should be requesting even if he's he's he did something terrible we shouldn't be promoting promoting killing so you can very easily say that this guy did something very wrong, but it doesn't mean that we need to promote further killing and right. so make you it worse. So everybody was upset. Everybody was like, well, he killed, yeah. he killed a, a, a person, and so therefore he should be killed. But you, you would come up and say, no, listen, this is not the solution. So what was the feedback to that? What was the reaction? It was a mixed, uh, there were mixed reactions. But most of the people were supportive that death penalty doesn't, uh, doesn't help in anything and never really help in reducing crimes. So if you look, if you look at it scientifically and uh, based on different countries, uh, it never helped. So mm -hmm. asking uh, to kill someone is not going to get us solution. anywhere. So people would calm down a bit and realize that this is not the way things are. You know, this is called a positive majority and I know that through your blog, uh, which we're seeing pictures of now. This is the Facebook. You were driving a Ferrari this morning. I was riding next we're, to someone. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're glad really. you made it safe here yeah. in time for the interview. Um, what, I, what I wanted to ask you is that uh, we can't deny that Lebanon has a lot of problems. You know, as we've been experiencing right now, the You Sting campaign and the waste management crisis in the country has made headlines all over the world. We can't deny that this is happening. And there are people saying, well, this country has nothing more to offer us. There's no water. There's no electricity. Um, and obviously now there's waste all over our streets. So when they come and they tell you there's nothing positive, how do you respond to them? Well, when they say that, it, 
apparently they didn't see what they, what they could do to help things uh, resolve things. Like for example, the garbage problem, the easiest solution and the least costly one is just to recycle. And that's what I posted about. And it turns out that we have tens or hundreds of companies in Lebanon that need like recyc recyclable uh, items to, to work. And no one is giving them that. So the easiest way to resolve the garbage crisis, we probably don't need protests is every, if everyone starts recycling. Right, but if they're telling so you the politicians also have to step in and help out with, you know, it has nothing to do with giving the responsibility to the municipalities, no? No, because you can recycle at home. You can agree with the municipality to come and pick up your recyclable stuff and sell it to, to the company. So here, I think the best way that we can tackle these problems is taking personal initiatives that have nothing to do with our politicians or what the government have to do, has to do. The same goes with electricity. You can go for renewable energies. You can, you can do many so things. So you sa you're saying that the people need to be a little more accountable and responsible towards themselves. Yeah, and start taking initiatives themselves. And is that what you try to promote through your blog Definitely, as well? Yeah. And you promote a lot of positive images, beautiful images of the mountains of Lebanon and different restaurants, different uh, lifestyles. What would you say are your top three favorite things about this country? Well, one, there's the lifestyle and the food. I think uh, there are so many things to do in Lebanon. And hummus, the food is, is that amazing. what you're talking about? No, actually, I'm not a big chicken. fan of hummus. Okay. But uh, I love, yeah, I think the food, everyone loves the food here. Uh, second, there's the. Um, okay, second, there's there are of course the the diversity we have here. I love how every area is different from the other. Of course, we're all one people, but I love discovering new towns, new right, cities, we have new a habits, lot of different new traditions. And yeah, but it's amazing, you know, because that's uh, I started a series this year to promote things to do in areas that people have uh, major misconceptions about, like, for example, Tripoli. Everyone thinks they're all extremists and the violence and what happened, or even Akkar that no one knows about. There are beautiful areas that no one knows about, and there are tons of stuff to do there. So I think this diversity is a really cool thing. And third, there's, uh, of course, family and friends. I mean, the bond we have here with the family and the fact that uh, friends are all, like, close by, and I think this is what what's keeping me here the most. Is that, how would you explain Lebanon to a foreigner? You know, they think we're, it's a land yeah. of warlords and, and, you know, just right. people running around but crazy. That's it. When they come here and havoc. see what we have, they realize that it's, it's very different from the way sometimes the foreign media portrays it. And I think you, through your blog, you're trying to show that, that positive that's side right, that yes. people need to... Uh, Despite everything, I'm trying. Are you optimistic? I are you optimistic about the always, future? Always, yeah. At least I'm hopeful that uh, there's always hope that things could get better. And if you look around us, I think we're in a decent position. We don't have war, we don't, we don't have terrorists still here, so I don't think we need to, to, be like th to be this negative, especially with everything happening around us. All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much for thank being you. with us. That was Najib Mitri, the blogger behind Blog Baladi, talking about why do we try to stay positive and why we should try to stay positive in Lebanon. Back to you, Linda. Thank you, Yumna. Here's to a better Lebanon. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a recap of our top stories. The People's Court says it filed a criminal complaint against Environment Minister Mohamed al-Mashnouk for committing an environmental disaster. Prime Minister Tamam Slam hailed Speaker Nadir Bidi's national dialogue call but warns that some political factions are trying to exploit the sufferings of the people. And powerful explosions rocked the Yemeni capital Sana as the Saudi-led coalition vows to press its air war. That's it from Yumna Nawfal and myself here at Future Television. We'll be back again tomorrow with more updates, so make sure you tune in. <laughs> Al-Qassah, al